In last week's program, we focused on the principle, the biblical principle of interposition, also known as the doctrine of the lesser magistrates, and how those in civil authority can biblically draw the line and stand in the gap for truth. This biblical principle is identified in Ezekiel 22.30, and it's the phrase from where we get the name of this program, Stand in the Gap. But in that verse, God said this, And I sought for a man among them to make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. You see, stand in the gap is a legal concept. It is directly related to truth and justice, the bedrock of law and God's justice, and it involves God's blessing and God's judgment as a result. Now, it directly ties in with God's design for authority in society where the individual, the family, civil government, and the church are all there designed by God, answerable to God, and have very specific and measurable duties. Uh, there's a line of demar demarcation uh, and purpose, distinctively separating one from the other. It's a concept that requires uh, a working knowledge of not only the duties of the specific position of authority, but the ranking of that authority as defined by God in Romans 13, 1, and the duty that each has to the other to hold the other to their appropriate God-defined limits. Now, ultimately, God gives a civil authority the sword of justice and places perhaps the greatest responsibility to make sure they protect the rights of the others as defined by God. And when civil authority jumps the fence of their God-given duties, it becomes the duty of the church and the family and the citizen to resist that evil government policy with the intent of bringing them back into alignment with God's design. That resistance and the process of raising up truth standards in God's design is in practice standing in the gap for truth, or what we would call interposition. Sadly, for many years, even Bible schools and seminaries have taught that whatever government says, we must obey no matter what. The understanding of the biblical interworking of God's positions of authority has been ignored or distorted with the result that evil rulers operating with no fear of God become tyrants. And when that happens, freedom is lost, persecution begins, and God's national judgment falls. So when and how should the church resist evil rulers and evil policies? Can we know when God's design is breached? And how can the church biblically respond to tyranny God's way? In today's program, we're going to focus on how the church can resist unbiblical mandates using the COVID panic policies as an example. Our special guest joining us again today is Pastor Matt Trujella. He's the author of the book, Doctrine of the Lesser Magistrates, and he's pastor of Mercy Seat Christian Church in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Welcome back to the program, Matt. Hey, good to be here with you again, Sam, and also with you, Isaac. God bless you. Uh, Matt, uh, as we get this section, again, last segment, we talked about the application of those in civil government, uh, lesser magistrates should interpose. I want to talk today about the church. But before I get into how, and we explain some of that, I want you to go right to the heart of a question and answer it. That, uh, again, it's a, it's, a, it's a myth, it's a lie that exists out there, but many hold it. And, and, and that is this, what is meant by the biblical command to obey those in government. Peter talks about it and Romans talks about it. And here would be the, the, the question. Does that obedience mean every law of government, of every official in government at all times and all circumstances? And if not, how does that take and apply? What's the distinction? It absolutely does not mean we're always to obey. That's something churchmen um, like to say um, here in America today and throughout the West. And it's simply not true. Romans 13, uh, 1 Peter 2, neither of them teach unlimited obedience to the civil government. Rather, men impose that on the text. It's what we call an act of eisegesis, where you read into Scripture something that is not there. If you look at the passages, it does not say that. And when you look at the, um, you know, the Word of God as a whole, Scripture interpreting Scripture, you see many examples 
where the people of God disobey the civil authorities and God commends them for their disobedience. If people go to our website, Sam, defytyrants.com, uh, we have an appendix there from my book, Dealing with Romans 13. Also at our YouTube channel, Defy Tyrants, we have a seven-minute video dealing with Romans 13. Both excellent. What people need to understand, Sam, is that when you embrace the view that we're always to obey the civil authorities, you are actually aiding and abetting tyrants in accomplishing their tyranny. The scriptures do not teach unlimited obedience to the civil authority. Christian church history shows countless examples where those who went before us disobeyed the civil authorities. It's needed and necessary at times. All right, thank you, Matt. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to add one, one piece to what uh, Matt just said. When we understand properly authority and that each of us will ultimately give an account to God for how we individually respond and then how all of the authorities, be it civil government or moms and dad in the home or whatever, also will give an account to God for how they do what God says, then all of the pieces come together in perfect alignment. We don't understand that. A lot of this does not make sense. When it's understood, it makes perfect sense. We'll begin to explain when we come back in just a minute how the church and church people should in fact be interposing in matters of what we're talking about now using COVID panic policies as an example. Truth, flexible or permanent? The Bible, ancient history or powerfully relevant? Culture, a reflection of enlightenment or warning signs? The pastor, commentator or frontline combatant? Every day, American Pastors Network speaks to these questions where and when they matter. With hundreds of affiliate radio stations nationwide, a website and mobile app screening today's headlines through the twin lenses of the Bible and the Constitution, educating, informing, equipping. This is the American Pastors Network. The time is now to stand in the gap for truth. Welcome back to Stand in the Gap, and we're talking today again about resisting tyranny. This is actually the fourth part in a series of programs we've had with uh, every one of these programs with our friend, Pastor Matt Truella from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And you can find more information that uh, Matt has, more of his writings and videos at defytyrants.com or just look his name up or Defy Tyrants on YouTube and you'll see more of it. But uh, we, we want to go to you now, Matt, and pick your brain a little bit more, talk to you more about this. Uh, we've talked about this subject in different ways, but we want to really kind of hone in right now on the church and identify how the church can respond or should respond, how we can actually interpose when authorities, uh, civil authority, comes against church authority. So, you know, last program you talked about the different authorities or different governments. You have uh, individual, personal, you know, self-discipline, self-government, home government, church government, and, and civil government. So when we say government, we oftentimes are talking about the civil authority. Walk us through, Matt, what a, a leadership team, and you've had to do this in your own home church, what a church leadership team has to go through in a case of 2020 or 2021, where the civil authorities start to put demands down on a church authority that uh, cross the line, that are unbiblical. Kind of walk us through what that looks like and how the response, how the interposition should take place. Sure. Well, you have to understand the state has limits. And when the state begins to tell the church, which has its own authority, God-given government, um, how they can worship, when they can worship, they've gone outside of their limits. Um, I think it was incumbent upon all churchmen to look into this matter when it first came down, because it was a massive hysteria that was brought upon the country. Um, fear spread everywhere. And we've seen that the word of God is true, that the fear of man brings a snare. <laughs> because we saw that with so many. So immediately what churchmen had a duty to do, I know what I did, I spent more time in the next 10 days after 
Trump's uh, declaration um, for the COVID thing, I spent more time reading about virology, epidemiology, and these matters than I've ever read in my entire life. Uh, read many professionals to see exactly what this thing was and did it even make sense what they were saying regarding human physiology and whatnot. And once you do your study and you look into these matters and you read men who've devoted their whole lives to these things who are totally repudiating the narrative that's being painted by Fauci and by government officials, um, your immediate response should be, we're going to have church. And that's what our church, Mercy Seat, has done since the beginning. Um, we've never worn masks. We've never social distanced. Um, we've never said, you know, you can only come this Sunday because your last name starts with this letter and we only have so much room. We've never done any of that. We never closed, even though our governor um, imposed that. Um, never met out in the parking lot. Always met together. Um, we lost our place where we could meet because it was a county building, but we all just met at houses. You know, we have about 200 people in the church. We split up into houses and met there until we were able to secure a new place to meet. That's how the church should have responded, I believe. And I told my fellow churchmen, I said, we must do this because they're teaching people a lie. This whole COVID thing is built on a mountain of lies. I said that way back last March, last April, a year ago. And I said, so we can teach the people that what they're being taught is fear-driven, hysteria-driven, it's not true, and we can be a benefit to the businessmen because the businessmen have all this law, licensure, regulation around their necks from the state. We don't have that as churchmen. We have much, far less to lose. We can interpose, be a benefit to society at large, be a benefit to the businessmen. Men will be pointed to Christ because of our faithfulness to him and standing against this wickedness. Instead, what we've seen the churchmen do is overwhelmingly they closed their churches and then they took money from the government. Most people don't know that they took over $10 billion. Churches and Christian organizations have taken over $10 billion. Close your church, you get this money. Um, when you reopen, make them teach your people to mask up, teach your people to social distance. In other words, teach them to go along with all this nonsense, all this evil. I'll go along with our tyranny and we will reward you financially for it. And the churchmen have done it. Not all the churchmen who closed took the money, understand that. But a significant number have. We should have never closed. We should have remained open. I can't believe there's still churches closed. And still the vast majority of churches following all this COVID policy of masking and other things should not be done. And, and Matt, what you laid out, uh, I'm glad you did, is that you went, as I believe every leader, whether they're in office or whether they're in the, we're talking about the church right now, should go immediately as the Bereans did in the New Testament when they were confronted with a new idea. They sat down and said, right now, what's the truth? and they searched out the truth on any given matter. That's what you did. And if we talk about standing in a gap for truth, in our last program we talked about, it, if we don't know what the truth is, God's truth, or that truth that prevails, if we don't know what that is, how in the world can we stand on it? You went and did that direction. That was the, that was the, the, uh, you know, the model. Now, let me ask you your comment here. In Canada, a lot of people may not be aware of this, but we've talked about it before. There is a pastor in Alberta, Canada, Calgary, um, who the government there said you can, as a church, only have 15% capacity. And if you meet with more than 15% capacity, you are in violation of the law. They, as a church, went through the process. They studied out the virology they, uh, of, the, of the whole matter. They determined that, yes, in fact, those things that, they, that you said were, were based on lies. But they also went and said, you know what, but the government, you also don't have an authority to step in and tell us how to worship because this is the church's jurisdiction. You're out of your box. They threw that pastor in jail. He is now out of jail, but they have barricaded the church. Now, based on what you know, right response? wrong response. It was an absolute right response. And I've been in contact with numerous churchmen and elders, um, pastors and elders up in Canada 
regarding the draconian measures. And you have to understand what they've done to those people up there, and in many parts of the world, Sam, have been far more severe than what's been done here. And I believe it's because we're an armed citizenry. I believe that's why they haven't been as draconian with us here, because what our founders left us um, here in America. Um, but what this pastor did was exactly right. And you have to understand, at times when you do what's right, you will suffer the consequences at the hands of the authority. Well, that's, what, that's, what, that's what Romans 13 talks about, right? Yeah. It, and it doesn't mean that suffering at the hand of the civil authority is a judgment for God for what you're doing. It's a natural result of standing for truth, but an evil civil government, you may expect to be thrown into jail if you oppose. That's, that's what you're saying. Right, an evil government perverts its God-given function. A good government, a just government, a godly government punishes those who do evil and rewards those who do good. A wicked government does the opposite. They punish those who do good and reward those who do evil. And that's what's happening here. Understand this, when James Coates did his last sermon before they arrested him, it was on Romans 13. Everyone should listen to that sermon. I talked to one of the elders up there. He usually gets two to 300 listens to a sermon that he preaches. There's been over 200,000 listens to that sermon. What they meant for evil, God has used for good. It has caused a huge stir up in Canada and here in America, forcing churchmen to re-examine this whole matter of we should just always obey the government. Because of his faithfulness to Christ, the Lord's using him, even in his bonds, the Lord used him for good. So, Matt, let's pick up on that. This, you know, they meant it for evil. God uses it for good. Uh, what role should the church be playing right now in 2021 with all the events that are going on? What kind of leadership should the church government be taking and demonstrating to businessmen and to the rest of the world how to interpose biblically? Well, we have a duty to instruct them from the Word of God. Understand, we're, we're a nation that's in rebellion to God. And here's, here's just a simple historical biblical fact. When men are in rebellion to the Lord, it increases the power of the state. When men don't want the Lord and his rule, atheistic states almost always lead to statist states. <laughs> they, you know, totalitarian states. When men reject the rule of the Lord, it's extremely important that people are taught what is right, that they're called to repentance and faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's massively important for us to do. And when it comes to this matter regarding COVID, God's word speaks to all matters of life, all matters of life. And we have a duty to show them from God's word, what are the limits of civil government? What authority does it possess? How they violated the law and word of God in many of their decrees? and take a stand. That's a righteous stand. That's a lawful stand. That's a good stand. That's gonna, that isn't lawlessness or anarchy or burning the place down. That reigns in the evil and tyranny of those authorities that are acting lawlessly. And that's how God intended it to be. And, uh, and Matt, we know that's what truth does, and that's the church is to be the pillar and the ground of truth, and the pulpits are to preach the whole counsel of God, and they are to communicate that truth. But if it's withheld, then you have decay. If it's out, then you have strength. Now, let's conclude with this. There are people watching right now who are God-fearing. They're Christians. They, they, they want to do what is right. And they are continually faced with the continual thing. Wear your mask. Take this vaccination, which we all know is a lie. It's not a vaccination by definition. It's permanently harming every person that takes it. But there's a lot of continuing pressure built off the COVID panic policies. But yet the individual feels like, I don't know that I, what I, 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 I have to go along, don't I? What's your response? Yeah. Don't wear the mask. Understand the whole masking thing was to teach you compliance. The whole masking thing was to make this fiction about COVID seem legitimate. And because you went along with the masking, now they got you wanting to get this vaccine, which as you said, and you're right, Sam, it is not a vaccine. They even changed how vaccine is defined in the Federal Register, Congress did, last 
um, fall, in October, in order to make this quote unquote vaccine um, fit under the definition, new definition of vaccine to get people to take this experimental thing, this mechanical medical device that they're injecting into people's bodies. The mask, don't wear it. I'm telling you, 99% of the time when you walk into a store that says you must have a mask, I've never worn a mask since this started. No one ever says anything to you 99% of the time, not a business person, not a um, customer. Um, I've only had like five places that made a big deal about it. The last one was Best Buy. I went in there with my daughter about a month ago. One of my daughters, we have 11 kids. And we walk in and there's two young men there, haven't been to Best Buy. And they said, sir, you have to wear a mask in order to shop here, They're right there at the door. And I said, oh, I don't wear masks. And he said, well, then we have just the thing for people like you. And he points to a table and here's all these face shields. And I looked at that and I looked up at him and I said, if you think I'm going to put that on my face and walk around your store like Jojo the circus monkey, you're living in a fantasy land. And the look on his face was priceless. We ended up in a conversation where I was able to explain some truth to him and ended up leaving. You must be willing to do this. Many people wear the mask just because they don't like confrontation. They want to fit in. They want to be liked. You're helping your eight if you go along to get along with each plank of the tyrant's tyranny you're helping them accomplish their tyranny and now and, that and they matt, got everybody wear and, a mask okay and matt, and matt we're gonna have to stop because we're we're literally out of time ladies and gentlemen just do what matt just said base on base your decisions on truth not fear of man and make your decisions based off of that. We don't have time to go further. We'll be back in just a second to conclude the program with some wrap-up thoughts from our guest, Matt Truella. Stand in the Gap is produced and recorded in the studios of Lighthouse TV, positively different television. Welcome back to Stand in the Gap. And as we conclude this, the fourth part of our series on resisting tyranny, I want to ask you, Pastor Matt Truella, uh, what, uh, could you kind of go back and, and kind of give us a, a summary of how we as Christians biblically can look through and, and um, sort of define like a filter for how we are to do this interpositioning and how and when we, we walk through those steps? Yeah, you have to look at the Word of God. Absolutely. You look at scripture, you see when the civil authorities are doing something contrary to the law or word of God, where they've acted outside the limits of their authority. Um, and then you live your life in obedience to him. And you instruct other people in these matters. You talk to them. It comes up throughout the day. And you point them to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is how Christian people live. This is what we should do. We should not allow the fear of man to be a snare to us. Um, we need to trust in the Lord. That's where true safety is found. Hmm. Uh, Matt, good conclusion. It makes me think of uh, the passage um, on the ceiling of the House of Representatives in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, where I served for a long time. There is a verse from the book of John that says, and it's a great place for it to be, a lawmaking body. But the verse says, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know the truth? If you don't know the truth, Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life, I pray that you accept him now. Without knowing the truth, you can never experience true freedom, spiritually, certainly, or frankly, even civil. And then, as we say in this program, knowing what the, what the Word of God says, seeking the truth, and then embracing the truth, and then acting upon it, that then will allow you and me and all of us to stand in the gap for truth. That is interposition. 
that is what God has us here for. That is being salt and light, as Christ told us to be. Well, thanks for watching us today and this program. I encourage you to go to our website that will be on the screen in a moment and uh, pick up this program, forward it to your friends, let them know that you can found, you found truth here. And I hope that this has given some principles to you that will help you in your life, in your family's life, to know better how to cut through the clutter and to stand in the gap for truth.